From high scoring victories, an unbeaten season, albeit with Celtic, to some of the best football you will ever see played on Football Manager, this weird tactic helps you destroy your opponents. So how exactly does it work? Before we start, shout out to Chris McCrill and Mangel Farawaja for signing up to the Patreon. Let's get started. This weird tactical story all started at Southampton. Many of you may have seen it on my Twitter, but it started at Southampton before eventually moving to other clubs. Now, I wanted to pick a team where I can dominate the opponents and play a style of football exactly the way I wanted to on Football Manager. So, I mean, in comes Southampton, welcome Southampton. And this is where I kind of just started to create that crazy idea. It all started with a back five before it moved to a back three. Then we started trying to get as many players in the front line as we can, and it ended up with five in defense and then five in attack and that is sort of the crazy story before we eventually tried it at some other clubs and then whilst at other clubs we learned we had to tweak things because of course different clubs had different players who have different traits etc etc that's why in a tactic folder you will have around three four different tactics i did create a tactic where you're supposed to be elite club in your league so it's all obviously compared in your league so a team like Celtic will be elite in Scotland etc etc and then we just wanted to dominate the league playing the football that we wanted to in the end we did make a match engine friendly version where you can try out other clubs and this is where we tried it at Fenerbahce and we won well a European trophy as well as the Turkish league as well as the Turkish cup but I'm actually giving you so many spoilers before we get to the results part but what we are going to do right now is break down this funky funky tactic my lovely people, this is exactly how it started. We've got three in defense, two in defensive midfield, three in attacking midfield, and then two up front. So it's literally a three, two, three, two, five in defense, five in attack. And that is kind of the method, the idea, have five in defense, you lot sort out the deeper areas of the pitch, and then we have five in attack, and then you lot sort out the attack. Of course, we're gonna have sort of that middle bit where we have players linking up play. So for an example, we will have, I know in one tactic, we have a Sagano Volante here, and then we have a playmaker in the middle here. And this is the way that we can kind of create a link between defense and attack, get players involved from defense and from attack, link up play, and that helps us progress smoothly or transition smoothly from defense to attack well <laughs> that was the idea so i said this weird tactical story started at southampton now you may have noticed that we have well quite a few fullbacks but decent fullbacks we've got romain perud who look as you can see, we are retraining as an attacking midfielder. Roman Perud, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Kyle Walker, Peters and Tino Livermento all had to get retrained. Well, Tino was kind of easy because we've just retrained him into defensive midfield. But Kyle Walker, Peters and Romain had to develop into attacking midfield, which is very, very different to their natural role. But looking at their profile, they can sort of play it. I mean, Kyle Walker, Peters is Parsons on 12. His vision's on 12. Technical 13. Okay, not Premier League level, but remember... We are in the championship and we are creating a tactic that is supposed to overwhelm the opposition. So now going back to the tactic, I had to find roles that they could play. That's not too demanding. For an example, a shadow striker. How is Kyle Walker-Peters supposed to move from a fullback to a shadow striker? I mean, there's just nothing familiar or similar at all between the two roles. So I just literally stuck with attack midfield on support. I felt that this role was the most generic that we could in this position. And this allowed me to then play these fullbacks in these sort of positions where now it starts to make sense when you think about the attacking midfielder having to sort of drop deep, but move into those wider areas. And once they do get into the wider areas, they can act then as just normal wide players. So for an example, Romain Perud, if he drifts out to the left and receives the ball to the left, he can drive down the flank, cross it in. And Walker Peters on the right hand side, the exact same. So what we will do is actually just put these players here. Now, these aren't actually my best attacking midfielders and these aren't players that played in these positions throughout the whole season. But I did say it's a weird tactical story and this is how the tactic all started out. So we've got two fullbacks here and then we have Tino as a, well, a ball playing defender on the wider area. So what I wanted to 
And what I wanted to also do as well is kind of mirror some of the roles. So we've got a ball playing defender on the right hand side. For me, I'm just going to put a ball playing defender on the left. And then in the middle, we can kind of figure out that role a little later. Now, moving into defensive midfield, I needed to find two roles where, I mean, we did want some sort of link between defensive midfield and attacking midfield, but we didn't want too much movements. For an example, if we lose the ball and he's gone flying in attack, we are completely exposed. And this tactic has its obvious flaws. The flank what happens if they attack the flank well opponents did attack the flank sometimes we dealt with it or dealt with it sometimes we didn't sometimes we won five nil sometimes we won five three it's part of parcel with this tactic and i was kind of expecting that but we also didn't want a role that's just gonna completely break down the tactic and make it awful so i wanted to find two roles where i could have this flexibility of linking play but of course not over overly exposing my defensive midfield area so i've gone with the segundo volante on support and then I've gone with defensive midfielder on defend and these two roles here should give me a nice balance and protection in front of that back line. Now moving in attack we still got three more roles we've got the attacking midfielder in the middle and then we've got the two strikers now actually we don't change much here we do want a creative midfielder and we do want a link so that is why we're going to just keep the advanced playmaker in the middle up top we wanted a goal scorer this is where the advanced forward comes in now this actually started as a complete forward as season progressed i did feel that the advanced forward was best on the uh, left hand side and then we can play our complete forward on support on the right hand side but a complete uh forward on the attack on the left hand side i mean it was a one-man team he just scored goals after goals after goals and you will see with some of the stats a little later on but for the balance of the tactic i felt this worked better rather than having the complete forward on the left hand side and then having a full slant or a deep line forward on support on the right hand side which is what we did at the start and it worked well until of course it didn't it's just stopped working well so this is actually the tactic and the roles but this is only the roles for one of the versions and obviously we'll speak about those versions right after we talk about the team instructions for the Southampton version so I went with the attacking mentality it started at balance I started progressing and progressing I felt attacking by the end of it was the best for Southampton again throughout the season you probably will have to tweak something here and there as you should you are a football manager my friend so attacking mentality attacking width is set to fairly wide we don't even mess with that passing directness on shorter trying to keep possession of the ball hold the ball with the tempo on slightly higher so then we can then hurt our opponents dribbling run at the defense i feel is vital and this is an instruction that you will see in all of the versions now in transition when possession has been lost counter press try and stop the opponents right away now some of you may think that actually that's a bit too risky why not regroup regroup is a lot more riskier as all you're doing is, is inviting pressure now remember we we do have obvious tactical flaws so we need to stop the opponents boom right before they can expose those flaws if we give them time just play the ball out in the wide areas run down the wide areas whip it in you're conceding conceding goals why you've given them the space to do it when possession has been won we then want to make counter attacking movements the goalkeeper in possession he's gonna roll it out nice and simple roll it out to your center uh, center backs again sometimes it's about actually not losing possession possession can be the greatest defensive tactic and then lastly out of possession a mid block force them and trap them inside because that is where your players are going to be step up more try and squeeze in and then we are operating in the mid block with a slightly more often trigger press because we are on attacking mentality now if i drop this mentality to balance the trigger press now goes to standard which actually is what we use in some other tactics but this is the Southampton tactic now when you are talking about away games uh, now when you are talking about away games you have some options to tweak but you don't have many great ones if i'm totally honest but on the right hand side rather than using a segundo volante on support you can use a deep line playmaker on support as well and these are sort of some uh these are sort of the tweaks that i noticed watching the games now <laughs> some of you people and I, I don't want to say some of you one or two of you like to question whether i play them or simulate them now if you do follow me on twitter again a cheeky 
a cheeky plug Twitter RDF tactics you will see me I'm actually playing the games and I'm updating everyone as I'm playing along sometimes I'm posting a bit too early sometimes I am winning 3-0 oh look at me winning great and then the opponents just come back 3-3 I don't tell you but we did, <laughs> she did just drop some points but make sure you are following me on Twitter and then you can catch some updates as I am actually creating the tactics and playing the games now if i'm not playing the games you will notice in a tactical folder i am giving you um a notepad as well and it's kind of give it's kind of a disclaimer i'm telling you the games that i am playing or the test that i'm playing and some of the tests that i'm simulating i will never simulate a test from the start i will always always play the games and then if i need to do other tests obviously i'm not going to do a test at southampton and then go to a different country and play 38 games there different country play 40 odd games there a different country and play it's, it's too much so i will play majority of the games in most of the tests or i'll play all of the games in one test and then i'll be like you know what i know it's good let me just simulate some other tests so there you are a bit of transparency the tactics they are called crazy 3-2 3-2 and we have a celtic version which is using a double <laughs> full nine it's what worked best with celtic like i said you would notice some tweaks as you're playing actually if i just did this this would work better with a set of players that i have we have a psv version which if i'm totally honest is my favorite one again you will see with the results and then we have a more match engine friendly version which unfortunately comes with wingers because like we said we want it to be more match engine friendly so these are the instructions short passing higher tempo run up defense be more disciplined in uh, transition is the same as the other ones but then out of possession again more match engine friendly a higher press a higher defensive line though that could be standard trigger pressure more often and then short uh prevent the short goalkeeper distribution then we have the celtic double force nine version where of course we are obviously using a double force nine some slight uh, role changes here a ball winning midfielder on the right hand side and then the roman playmaker on the left hand side that was because our uh, best defensive midfielder was left footed he was a playmaker and then our best defensive midfielder was right footed let him defend on his right foot kind of simple stuff there and then the passing and the tempo again slightly different we are playing out from the back we are sending in whipped crosses and then out of possession is invite crosses actually and then operate in a mid block again slight tweaks that i noticed playing with celtic and then lastly we have the psv version my favorite version and then you can see here play out from the back the passing directness and tempo again bang in the middle this is actually pretty much the same as the celtic version but we do have a libero and then we do have a complete forward on the attack on the left hand side and a deep line forward on support on the right hand side basically the combination that i told you i started with southampton but then i tweaked but with psv it was absolute killing it which we are going to look at right now because we are going to move over to the result part of this uh video but i did want to show you what i put in the description here as well will not work with every team test and tweak or use the match and uh, match engine friendly version as your reference point so again i put a little disclaimer here do not be testing this with crystal palace do not be testing this with wolves now if you're manchester city and you want to play your 3-2 box formation or your 3-2-4-1 that pep guardiola is using right now pep guardiola i'm telling you this for free pep guardiola will not go to luton and try that out it's too risky it doesn't suit the current crop of players so please pick a very good team if you are using this tactic don't blame me if it's not working with your team that is predicted to finish in mid table but that's the disclaimer done that's me talking about the actual weird tactic now let's look at some of the results and you can see some of the style of players we talk as well starting off with the sky bet championship we absolutely dominated that by 13 points we ended with 112 championship points in the fa cup we got knocked out in the fifth round by leicester in the carabao cup we got knocked out in the fourth round by leeds in the sky bet championship we scored the most with 108 we had the most shots for and the most possession which would be a recurring theme you will see that your team actually has a lot of the ball a few the fewest shots conceded i mean it's leeds and we come in six so this is where the tactic has its downside and its flaws but player stats the top goal scorers i mean shay adams with 47 goals second member with 18 and then you can see here with the average rating there are a lot of southampton players seven 
to be exact in the top 10. Shea Adams with the most man of the match awards. James Proud was 26 assists. I mean, he better be whipping in those set pieces. Safe percentage, our goalkeeper there with an 82% safe uh, percentage. Respectable. Make sure you have a very, very good goalkeeper and then expected goals as you are expected to see <laughs> is Shea Adams at the top there. With Celtic is where we had our invincible season. We played 38, we won 33, drawing five, losing none with 104 points. Now with Celtic, they didn't have the squad. They absolutely didn't. So we sold, I mean, a lot of players. Daisy Maeda, Greg Taylor, th this guy, James Forrest, Ben Dowak was not me. That was obviously a real life transfer. And then, of course, I made some transfers. <laughs> some decent ones. So we got Axel Twan Zabi in, Tom Davies. So these are not, oh my God, wow signings. We even got Gagadini, who, I mean, attribute wise looks fantastic but he only started two games only two games in the SBL. Henrik Arujo started majority of the games he was the top goal scorer with 22 goals decent player actually then we got Jesse Lingard right at the last moment another very good transfer actually and then <laughs> I had the opportunity in December to get Hazard and guess what we got Hazard now he played an intriguing role because actually when you put Hazard in the tactic you will see that I used him as a trequa Tista. Looking at the schedules, of course, you're just going to see green, 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 green. How do we do in a Champions League? Not too great. We had Manchester United, Barcelona and Lazio, a very difficult group. We did manage to beat Lazio and draw against Manchester United. Unfortunately, we lost to the others and then we didn't manage to stay in Europe because we didn't get Europa League, but we did win the Scottish Cup, as you can see here, the Scottish Cup and the uh, Premier Sports Cup. So we won every trophy in Scotland. This was my favorite one. As I said a little earlier though, <laughs> weirdly, we actually dropped more points in games in this one so we drew three but we also lost three games as well and we still absolutely dominated the league by five points Ajax <laughs> funny enough finished in third position we got knocked out in a round of 16 by Inter Milan in the Champions League so we did decent enough in Europe again looking at the area of Vise we scored the most goals the most shots for the highest possession was 65 percent and also the fewest conceded but Looking at the player stats, Luke De Jong as that complete forward on attack, absolutely killed it. 34 goals in 27 starts. Now I'm actually thinking about doing a video purely based on complete forwards and how to get the best out of them. Let me know in the comment section if I should. And lastly, with Fenerbahce, we won the Turkish Super League, we won the Europa Conference League, we won the Turkish Cup, and we won the Turkish Super Cup. Admittedly, this was simulated Southampton and PSV absolutely not simulated none of the games in the leagues were simulated all of them were played most of them or majority of them are actually on my Twitter some of the goals that are scored in those games but we did beat Vila in the final with the match engine friendly version now you can see they actually had two clear cuts I mean they actually created a better chances here they had two clear cuts five half chances and they also played Leon Bailey in Tyron Mings <laughs> up front that is how we won the conference league uh let's change the camera let's we can have a quick look at these goals so here's Mert on the left hand side he's gonna whip this in yes he does but crespo pit oh freaking hell what a goal here's Jao pedro has Mert into rossi rossi oh gets his shot blocked he goes to earth and come back to Mert. tidy tidy by the looks of it, they actually had two disallowed goals as well. So here's Leo. Oh, okay. It's just a long ball. The goalkeeper's in no man's land. And that is one of the flaws as well, because you've only got three defenders. If they do hit a long ball down in the channels, I mean, it could be problems for you. But here's William Arreo, plays it into Jao Pedro and just cool and confident into the back of the net. And that is how we scored our goals against Fenerbahce. Uh, Fenerbahce against Vila in the final. Jesus. You would have seen some of the goals throughout the video already, but again, I mean, it is no harm in showing you a few more goals of the beautiful, beautiful football. So let's actually slow this down just by one. And you can see here's our centre back bringing the ball forward, looking to uh, Boscali. He plays the ball into Till, and it's just a simple, simple finish. Next goal, 
a lovely win there by the centre back Noah Lang into Xavi Simons. So when we break, we break in numbers, and it's very, very difficult for the opposition to deal with. And then when we're playing possession base, I mean we could just overwhelm them again with attacking numbers, players on the last line, players moving in between the defence and the midfield, and it could just be very, very overwhelming for the opposition. Of course, if they do win the ball back and you've committed too many men forward, too many men, too many, many men, then of course they can expose uh, the flaws in your tactic. But again, that's part of the parcel of this tactic. We didn't create the perfect tactic this time, but we created, I mean, the most fun tactic possibly. Sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen. You're either just gonna absolutely walk over the opposition, or sometimes it's gonna be a close game where it's a 5-3, you're scoring all your chances, they're scoring, scoring all their chances. You might be on the edge of your seat, but the, at the end of the day, you're playing football manager differently, you're having a bit of fun, the games are a bit different where you're not absolutely dominating every single game so you get that little bit element of surprise and that is one way right there how you could um concede some of your goals in football manager here's Xavi Simon plays it into Vertessa and Vertessa into Sabiri nods it down to Till just look how many, look how many players we've got in the box there there's one two three four five six seven there's not even supposed to be that many players in the box at that time but there's seven players in the box and this is what I mean about uh the most fun or the most weird stuff that you would see you would just see your team doing things like that and then lastly you can have games like this we played I some people might ask what happens when you play Ajax okay this is the home version so let's look at the away one so the away game we still ended up winning 2-1 anyway but they were the better side admittedly now look at the match momentum we actually saw most of the ball it's more about what we were doing with the ball not uh not good stuff not good stuff but this game here had me on the edge of the sea and this is what i mean about fun and unpredictability and craziness now they went 2-0 up despite us just absolutely hammering them the whole game the xg at 3.90 free clear cards eight half chances they had one of each they scored with their one of each and then we just kept knocking on the door and then eventually that door got opened with sabari scoring in the 75th minute vertessa scoring in the 76 and then we got the winner in the 88th minute so you can imagine me playing this game lose just look at the goals look at the quality of their goals and then you can you could just imagine me absolutely losing my s word but when we did equalize i went absolutely mad and then when we got the winner i went even more crazy and then here is where we started to i mean break down that door here's till till whips it in for sabiri oh a bit of fortunate bit of fortune there but you know we deserved it here's de young el ghazi El Garza plays into Vertessa. Now that is a finish. That was me going crazy. And then I was like, one more highlight. I was like, please don't lose the ball. Please don't lose the ball. We played through the Ajax defense. Luke De Jong into Sabiri. And then cool and composed. But unfortunately, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know the structure of it is slightly different. I hope you have enjoyed the structure. It should make the video smaller, but the information, it should all still be in there. So tell me what you think. Chris McCrill and Manjel Farrell Raja, thank you for the Patreons as well. If you want to support this channel, please check out the Patreon. Honestly, it's one of the best ways that you can do so. Only do so if you can afford it. Do not kill yourself to support me. I love you lot and I appreciate uh, appreciate you lot. <laughs> Make sure you are following me on Twitch, Twitter and all the good stuff. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Peace out. Boop.